everyone, it's Tim Holtz and I'm here at scrapbook.com and I wanna share with you quite a few different ways to use the tonic tools that I have developed with them. And there's such a variety of tools because I think as crafters, the more tools, the better because they all have a very unique kind of property to them and also a specialty in what they're able to achieve. And we're gonna start out with the basics and then I'll talk about some of the specialty tools because I think learning those little tips and tricks is really gonna help you get the most out of them. So we'll start with just the trimmer. So I'm just gonna kind of move these out of the way just to create a little space and I'll get into each one, but we will talk about the guillotine trimmer. Now I know there are a variety of paper cutters out there, but I really prefer a guillotine simply because it makes it easier to cut and also gives very precision cutting. Now this one has a six inch measurement on the top and it is gridded and there is a stop bar on the top and the bottom and that will allow you to take your paper, whether you're cutting eight and a half by 11 or in this case, eight by eight, and you simply lift that up it is a friction handle, so it's actually going to stay up. It's not spring loaded at all, but it will allow you to go in and take your paper and slide it under. Now, one thing to point out is this guide. This guide is very important because this is also not only going to guide the blade, but give you finger placement to keep your fingers away from the cutting blade because the cutting blade, of course, is very sharp. Now, when you're cutting your paper, you can either press it against the top to align it or align it to the bottom of the guillotine trimmer. Completely up to you. Uh, which one is your preference. But all you need to do is take that, and I like to use this embedded grid as my measuring guide because this is going to definitely determine if the paper is straight. So you can see right away if you kind of put the paper in, if you're not centered on the grid line, it's not gonna be a straight cut. So you're just gonna place that there, then you're going to take your index finger and thumb to actually secure the paper, and then you're going to make your cut. Couldn't be easier, right? Now, of course, we can take this, we can stack our cardstock. If we're just going to quarter cut this, I'm gonna slide it under there, bring it back up to that mark at four inches. Same thing, hold that into place and bring that down. Now, if you find your paper slipping, here's one of the things that's really great about a guillotine trimmer and why I love it, is that I can go in and I can go in and just simply straighten off even the smallest amount of paper. Take a look at that. That's what's really cool about this. And whether I'm cutting cardstock or even watercolor cardstock, 110 pound watercolor paper, it will cut with ease using the guillotine trimmer. So here's a piece of watercolor cardstock. And if I was going to put this onto a card, place that in, just make sure that you're holding this in place. And I can just go in and just trim off the smallest amount of paper using this. That's what's cool about this trimmer. All right, let's get into other things that cut, of course. Here are the scissors that I've designed with Tonic. And you'll see that there are three sizes. Of course, it started out with the original snip but there's also a mini snip and that's really great for fussy cutting. This I consider for everyday crafting and then we have the shears and this is nice for not only large cards but also for fabric. Now, all of these scissors have the same properties and those are the fact that the handles are cush grip and the cush grip handle is nice because it doesn't contain any metal throughout the scissor at all. So it's really kind of squishy and all of them have that. And the great thing about it is that you don't have to worry about that metal actually rubbing on that joint. It just forms to your hand. You may not realize it's happening, but it is, that's what's cool about that. Then of course, they all have a locking cap that you simply pop that off and you'll see that they have nonstick blades and the nonstick blades are great if you're going to cut foam adhesive, glue dots, anything like that. If they do gum up, the easy way to clean them is simply open them up, soak them in warm soapy water and wipe them clean or you could use any type of adhesive remover on them. Now, the real significance of any of the tonic scissors is that they have a micro serrated blade. And what that micro serrated blade means is that one of the blades has tiny little serrations on it. So every time you open and close the scissor, they will self sharpen the blades. So the blades do not dull throughout the life of the scissor. Every time I open and close, you'll feel that little bit of friction. And that is really important to all of these scissors as they work. Now, when we go to cut, pretty simple. I can just take that, of course, make my cut. They'll cut right to the tip. We can cut even these tiny little tips. Now, if you're doing some detailed cutting, let's talk about uh, fussy cutting. If you're doing any type of fussy cutting and I wanna cut with just the small mini snips or any of them, just depends on uh, what your preference is, I'm just going to go in and kind of form right around. And even my hands, I can fit my thumb in there and they'll just pop right out simply because of that flexible handle, which I love. But let's go in and talk about doing some of the fussy cutting. So I'm just gonna go around and do some cutting. Now watercolor cardstock, really easy to cut, but let's say you were cutting things like vellum or transparency. Because these are micro serrated, they're only micro serrated on one side. So if you're ever doing your detail cut and you notice that it's leaving little bumps along the edge, all you need to do is flip the scissor over and it will create a smooth cut along that edge. Because remember, it is only micro serrated on one side of the blade. So that's just a good little trick if you're finding that you don't like 
the little notches that it might be leaving. And it really only does that in more translucent papers, like I said, vellum or transparency. Really easy, and you can even go in, just cut off the smallest detail, or even go in with just the tip, and you could be as precise as you want with these mini snips. They're nice, and they are sharp. So let's talk about the shears. Now, why would you need a giant pair of scissors? Well, first of all, they're great. That's why, because if you're just going to cut a card, let's say you had a regular card, or you like to do a four and a quarter by five and a half card fronts or photo mats, you can open this up and you can go right through this paper in one cut. So I can cut that in half. So if I wanted to split that or do a photo mat, it's really easy. But the shears are also great for things like fabric. If you do any type of fabric work in your mixed media or journals or anything like that, these are going to cut through fabric really nice. And you don't have to have a dedicated pair of scissors. These will go and cut through fabric, ribbon, chipboard, cardstock, even wire or ribbon or anything like that because of that non-stick self-sharpening blade. That's what I love about working with any of these scissors. So a lot of other tools though, tools that are a little bit more specialized than just cutting. So first I'll talk about kind of these retractable guys. These are cool because they can go into a drawer, they can go into a cup, you don't have to worry about them stabbing you because these are all retractable. So the first one is going to be a scratcher. Now the scratcher is kind of weird, I'll say. Um, you need to have a specific use for it. I like to use it for many things. Of course, I love to distress things. So if I'm going to go over a photograph or in this case, metallic cardstock, I can create that cool scratch distress edge and it will allow me to ink it. But where I really get the most use out of my scratch tool is if I die cut fabric. If you're going to die cut a heart or a flower or something like that and you wanna create that tattered edge, you can die cut a shape and use the scratch tool to go around and fray the edge of fabric. So it's a specialized tool, but it's one that's really cool if you like that whole distress grunge look. Now the next one is going to be a craft pick. And what's significant about this particular pick besides it's retractable, but it retracts in stages. So I can extend that and each layer actually locks into a level. Now, as the pick gets longer, the diameter of the needle actually gets larger. So if you just need to poke small holes, you can just do that and you can poke onto a cork mat, a mouse pad, a piece of craft foam, anything to actually pierce through. And if you need to pierce a hole through, maybe to put a brad or something through, you can extend it all the way up. And then when you go and pierce that, it's going to create a hole that's going to be large enough for the head of a brad. So that's really cool about working with a pick like this. And then of course, we can retract it out of the way. And we'll talk about a knife. Now, I like a craft knife. Sometimes I'll use that if I do need to do some detail cutting or any type of slicing like that. But it also has those different stages that I can have just a small amount of that blade showing, or I can continue to extend that blade if I need a little longer, whether I'm going through cardstock or maybe thicker things like chipboard or even mat board. I can go and cut that. Now, for this, you're going to want to work on a cutting mat. So just kind of bring in a cutting mat, just to show that with you. Really important because we need something that's going to allow this blade to move. So if I'm just going to cut, I can have a piece of cardstock. I'm going to use a metal edge of a ruler. Pretty simple. You're just going to place this down, clean it up there, and you're just going to make your cuts. Now, this is a very sharp blade, but a lot of times because of the thin blade, I like to just go through that surface a few times just to make sure that I have a nice clean cut when I'm going in and cutting that with a craft knife. Now, the craft knife has replacement blades, very easy to replace. All you need to do is simply remove the backing, push this up and the entire unit actually is replaceable. So you don't have to worry about holding on to that sharp blade. So they're replacement blades for the knife and very, very sharp. I'll even kind of hold it up over uh, this black mat so you can see it's a really thin blade that has that very, very sharp angle to it. Pretty cool. All right. Now, some other ways that we can cut and do different things are with these kind of fold away tools. And these are sold in a package of three. They're really cool because there are three different styles. We've got uh, this gray one. And this gray one is really nice because it's actually a creaser. If you just want to create a crease or a score, maybe we just want to go in and score paper. I can go right onto this and I can just uh, open it up. There's a little kind of grooves right there for your finger. And you can go in and you can create that score mark. I don't really like to freehand it. I don't even like to use a ruler. If you have any type of scoring tool, like something like this, it's really neat because although it normally comes with a folder, you can do that, but it often creates kind of a wide channel. Here I can go in, I can place this down, and if I put this into that channel, I can just follow that and create a really, really thin score. So this is really good if you're doing any type of paper folding or if you're making smaller, more intricate cards and you don't want a really large crease in there that you would get with a bone folder. So that's really nice because you can see it makes a really nice clean, clean fold. But there are two other ones that come in there and they do some pretty cool things. Of course, this red one, when we open this up, 
This is going to be a rotary cutter that actually has a blade. So this one allows you to go in, let me just flip this paper over that I can just kind of push and cut through there. I can go and kind of do a little dance and make a sculpt cut if I want. And you can follow this. And the nice thing about this when I'm pushing this around is you can create a sculpt. We can just go in and we can slice things off. Really, really easy to use. But again, you want to work on a cutting mat for that. Now, another one that's really great, especially if you like to do any type of uh, gift cards or party favors is this guy. And this one is actually a perforating blade. So when I use this and I go right across the surface, this is going to create these little perfs. And the perforator is just going to allow you to kind of have removable things, detachable things like tickets and things like that. Uh, and you create those little perforated notches. Pretty cool, just some fun tools to have. And again, they just fold up, lock away, and you can even put a little ring through those and hook those up in your craft room or put them in uh, your craft drawer. Now there's one more, of course, and that is going to be the paper distressor. What is a paper distressor? Well, what this has is actually a recessed blade all the way around. And when you use it on paper, cardstock, anything like that, you can put in any of these notches. They all do exactly the same thing. And you're simply going to drag this back and forth and that is going to distress the edge. And look how that chews it up right away. So if I just wanna create kind of a very faint distressed edge, I can just drag it in one direction and you get just a very subtle distressed look. Or if I drag it back and forth, it's really gonna go in and kind of chew up the edge of that. And different card socks, of course, distress a little differently, but this is a great tool to have. So there's an overview of all the different tonic tools, whether you want a guillotine or the scissors, any of the retractable tools, the fold-up tools, or of course, the paper distressor. So many creative possibilities. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happy crafting!